uh, we have three types of variable as you can see it over here you will find all these types over here so once we add a new variable then we have uh, two false text and number so we will review how we can utilize a true false variable uh, today in this particular so i've just created a small uh, uh, you know demonstration file so that i can show you how uh, this can be used yeah, so I'm going to first demonstrate it for you and then we go ahead and we uh, find out how to do it. It's simple, you know, we usually use these triggers uh, where we set a, uh, for each of the character, we set a particular value and then it, it will, value in sense, we say, okay, it's true. If you click on it, this will be taken as a true. Let's see how it happens. Okay, so previewing it. So what we want in this particular scene, uh, the learner gets the opportunity to choose, a, choose the character. The character will be throughout the course. Okay, so uh, they can choose like instead of male, female character, it can be also some other type. Let's say character with a funky uh, attire or a character in a formal attire, however way you want it. Not necessarily it should be a male, female combination, right? So let's say uh, we have this uh, two character. Let's say I'm choosing, which which one do you want to choose people? Come on. Whom do we choose? Laura or Brandon? Laura, all right, there we go. So I click on Laura since we chose Laura and there we go. So this character get disabled. So even if I click on the Brandon, I will not be able to get him. Because I chose this character. Yeah, and this character get a selected state. If you see this blue color, little bit of lightish kind of uh, I, uh, feeling. Everybody? And then the next slide. So, okay, hold on. I think I didn't share my sound. The backlog holds all of the plan the tasks. Working. Can you hear the sound people? Worked on and done holds the completed tasks. I didn't share it initially, so I just shared it in between. So the, this character appears and then we go to the next slide, just a quick quiz kind of a thing. It's just a sample. Again, this character is there. We can have a different pose for the character and I say choose the right answer, so it's just the right answer. Right, so uh, that's how you can make the learner choose a character. Let's preview for also the Brandon. So instead of Laura, I'm choosing Brandon. So there we go. And Laura get disabled. And then there we go. Kanban board so you can see the voiceover now. Backlog. Work in the progress. Voiceover is a Brandon. Done. Last time it was a. The backlog holds all of the Laura. planned tasks. Work in progress holds I'm tasks. Using that are the being volume a little bit. And done holds I hope you notice the voiceover change also. All right. And there we go. Question. And then I choose. Let's choose the correct answer. There we go. So what are we doing over here? If you just carefully notice, we have, of course, two characters being chosen because you are giving the first slide. In the second slide, you can see here, there's no, it's it's a blank, right? No, you don't have a character. There's no character as such. But the character will come up as we, the learner chooses a particular character. So I want you to notice what will happen. And I'll also do it for you so that we can have a demonstration of it, right? So in the timeline, if I just choose one character, we created the three states I, I told you. Disabled state, selected. Selected is a blue color. We just made a little bit of highlight over here. And then for Laura also same, three states. Characters can have states, right? And then, of course, in this particular slide, you, you have to watch out this particular trigger, which is very important. So when the state of Brendan is selected, yeah, then what we are doing yeah, the set the Brandon value is true. If it's Laura is selected, if Laura, then value is true. So set the Brandon values to true. So this is where we have to basically watch out and make the triggers according. We are adjusting the variable accordingly. Over here also, same thing. We're adjusting the variable when the state is selected. Okay, so let's let's do it. I think that perhaps can give you a better idea. I'll just open a new file. Should I do it the same? Okay, I'll do it in the, the scene itself. Okay, so first thing, what we do, we get character. Yeah, so I'm just going to grab two characters. 
maybe Samantha and then just kind of Corbett. Well, however we you wanted. You can have the full size character also if you wanted. Yeah. And then we can get another character because anyway, we wanted two characters to be there in place. I'm taking another character as a male character so that there'll be a change of voice. So otherwise, uh, both the voices will end up to be similar. So that only for making the changeover, I'm choosing another character. Let's say Bob. Then copying the character. Yeah, and then for each character, we set a state. So here we go. The normal state is already there. So what we try to do is edit state. We create a new state and there we have options. So I'll create a selected state and add it. Now, the moment you correct it, selected state, you can see here, it's, an, it's a normal kind of a state which is there. So I, let's say you want to highlight it. So what you do when you are here, you select that in the selected state and you go to format. And you can add a little bit of effect if you want it. That's not necessary, but you can add effect. Let me add some, let's say, a red color kind of an effect. If you're getting the glow, a little bit of red glow, there we go, we leave it. Okay, and we say done. Of course, we want another uh, state to be added. Let's say state and then we say this as a, a disabled state and add it. So regular, whatever normal is that will be getting added. So let's say for disabled state, I want to also have a little bit of grayish kind of an impact that I can go to my format once again. Yeah, and then recolor it. So however, I want to recolor it. So let's say we recolor it this way. Or we can make it a little bit more lighter like this if you want it. Or maybe this one. Yeah, see, this is also becoming grayed out and say done. So when learner is selecting one, they will have an idea that this is disabled. Even if they click on clicking multiple times, they will know this is disabled because the color itself is indicating. See here, this is a selected one and normal one. We do the same thing for this character also. So let's say edit state. New state quickly. I hope you all are following. Please do ask in between when you get a doubt. We're going to the picture effect and we are setting it a red color. Then we go one more. This one will be disabled. And then recolor. And this. All good? Everybody, we have three states and the character one also. I think it's always good to name the character. So let me put it as a Bob. And Samantha. Right. So now we're going to set the trigger like you saw over here. Basically what we are doing. Uh, we are, of course, we have to create a variable first. In this case, we'll be creating a true and false variable. So when learners selects the particular character, then the variable will get adjusted accordingly. So both the character will be setting it accordingly. Right? So let's do that. So create, already there's a variable in place, true false variable. So I'm going to go ahead, create the a new variable. I can name the variable. Perhaps in our case, it's a two character variable we are creating. Let's say Bob. This is going to be a true false variable. I'll set the default as true. Yeah. Or if you want to set it as a false, that can also do. Let's say false. Both. And then Samantha. It's a Boolean variable. Okay. So two variables are created. Now see, it's use count is zero, zero. We haven't used it, that's why. Okay, okay. Now we can set the trigger. So what we want, I haven't mentioned it. Perhaps we should kind of quickly do it so that there's no confusion. 
let's say close your character so we are just variable mm -hmm. okay tell me what do you think what what is that you wanted to happen everybody adjust variable set brandon to true that's what we wanted not branson but in this case uh, bob well, let's begin with samantha samantha to true when state because we want that only state of the samantha yeah is selected here everybody yeah so adjust variable set samantha to true when the state of the Samantha is selected, it means a learner has clicked on the Samantha. Because learner clicked on the Samantha, it is being considered to be selected one. And okay. Yeah, we apply the same trigger for the Brendan also. Okay. So long selection. Only thing we have to adjust. So what do we adjust variable in our case, Bob, when the state of the Bob is selected to true. All good. Now another variable, what we want the change the state of the, let's say starting with Samantha to, let's say disabled when the state of the or you can say when it's the user clicks on you know that thing or you wanted to state what do you which one do you want to go for it's just it'll be the same thing let's say the state of the bob is last. okay change the state of the samantha when the state of the bob is selected or when user clicks on the uh, i think that can be the one you can say when the user clicks on bob all good? Everybody? People? I, I hope you got the variable. Variable one is clear. So we are adjusting the variable. And after that, we are, what action we wanted. When, suppose I choose a character, Samantha, then uh, it, the Samantha should be uh, the selected one and the Bob should get disabled. So we are trying to disable state of the Bob. We are trying to create that particular aspect. So for that, uh, change the state of Samantha to, so we want the Samantha to be disabled if we click on the Bob and vice versa. And that's what we are applying. So change the state of Samantha to disable when user clicks on Bob. Yeah. And then we set another trigger, mm -hmm. change the state of the, in this case, Bob to disable when the user clicks on Samantha, so that this character will stay accordingly. In this first scene, we don't have a voiceover. If you want, you can have a neutral voiceover that, okay, choose your character because we are yet to start the game over here. Another thing can be done is that uh, as you choose a character, let's say Samantha, then the dialogue bubble can appear. There, hello, I'm Samantha. I'm here to help you, something like that, which has been not added. But you, since you know how to create the dialogue bubbles and all that, that can be an additional thing which you can add up so let's quickly review this particular trigger is kind of clicking out so we are selecting samantha there we go he got grayed out yeah now i even if i click on bob it will not work so perhaps if i replay i click on the bob then this is getting disabled because i clicked on the replay button all clear Right. Now let's go to the next scene. Now what we are doing in the next scene, uh, we select the character and we set the regular triggers which are in the next scene what we want. We want the character to appear. If you just carefully notice, there are two voiceovers. Can you notice it over here? There are two voiceovers here. Yeah. So which means one is a your Samantha's voiceover. One is a your, uh, in this, we have Brendan and Laura's voiceover. 
there are two voiceovers which are added in the second slide. If you just, I'll just show you over here also. So this is one, this is one. Brandon and Laura's. Now what happened if you want any uh, e-learning course where you, have, you want to give a choice to the learner, then the voiceover need to be added for both voices, both character. If it's male, female, then male, female voices. It will not happen automatically. Voiceovers doesn't happen automatically. So you just have to put a little extra effort in getting a voiceover for uh, if you're giving selection of character. If you don't want any voiceover, then this problem is solved. You don't give a choice of character. Even if you give it, you give it for a one or two scene only, not for the entire course. So this needs to be taken care very importantly. Otherwise, uh, it may happen that it will just happen to be other way wrong. Yes, so uh, let me just show you the states. If you just again notice over here, we have here. So in the middle, the character is appearing. So here you have your image. If I just, yeah, you have your text box, you have your character voiceover, which is also given over here. If you just see the two voices over, which are, you also have a, a text box and you have a character. But do you see a character here? There is no character. So when you when I click on the character, you can see what I have done over here. This is I've left it blank. Or what you can do, just for your reference, you can leave the Brendan over here instead of leaving it blank. That's your choice. Now, I would recommend you to leave one character in the normal. The reason is what happens uh, if you if the character will occupy a particular space on the slide. So if you don't leave it if you don't leave a character in that, then all the remaining content of the slide, the text boxes and your images or videos, or icons, etc., might overlap with the character when you're trying to do a placement. Because now I have removed the character from the normal state. This confusion would not happen if I leave Brendan over here. Because you know the Brendan is going to occupy this much of space C. Otherwise, what will happen? The Brendan's hands will overlap with the image which I have placed it towards the right hand side. So to avoid that confusion, you can keep the one character in the normal. However, it will not make any difference to the learner because learner will see whatever they choose because we have set a trigger for it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah, now yes. you notice yes. what is Change the state of the character. So it means initially, even if I have Brandon or Laura, does not make a difference. When the state of the character, you know, we have set it in the previously, uh, change the state of the character, set it to Brandon when timeline starts, when the value is true, because it was chosen earlier only. So from the previous slide, it's going to continue. And now see the change the character to the state of Brandon. Look at the state we are choosing. No selected, no disabled, no normal. That character itself is a state. That's how it's going to happen. Understand the trick. I'll, I'll tell you anyway how to do it. Perhaps this is what I wanted to watch out so that there's no confusion. So what I am going to do, uh, this demonstration file, I have removed the character. But in the, uh, the one which I will do now, I will keep the character. So you know the placement of the uh, things on the slide. And the same thing we are doing over here, also, here for the audio play also. Play which audio? This Brendan. Timeline that when the value is true accordingly. Okay. So let's go ahead now. Create the second cell. I'm going to just fill it up with some stuff so that we'll have some little bit of thing. First, I should get the character ready. So let me insert the character. And we are going to choose Samantha. Where did she go? There it go. You can choose a different pose if you want. So um, let's Samantha, make this hand gesture. Bob should also have similar hand gestures, perhaps. So I leave the character over here. I'm going to edit state. Let me edit state. Yeah, and then add a new state. A uh, new state. I'm going to name it as a. It's Samantha. Okay, all good. And say add. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to add one more. And this time it's going to be Bob. Add. Okay, now you need to watch out. This is the one I think I was talking last time also. Carefully delete Samantha here. Select 
and Dell button. Okay, now can you see this plus button over here on the screen? See here, this plus button. All right, so just be careful that you need to place your character just over there in that edge. See here, your plus button is here. Okay, so here is your plus button. You insert the character in such a manner, it will just place in the same place as Samantha is right now, where your plus button will be towards this particular corner. Okay, so I'm deleting the Samantha now, and I'm going to go get a character. A character, and there we go. We say Bob. Where is Bob? Okay, here we go. And choose a pose. You can choose any pose. Perhaps I'm going to choose something similar to Samantha's pose. Maybe this one. But not necessary. Her hands were down. So if you want, we can have it something like this also. Okay, insert. Yeah, now carefully notice it's been, where it's been inserted. And say done. All good? Okay. So if you want, what I have done, I have removed this also. I kept it blank. Are you understanding the difference between keeping it blank and non-blank? So if I leave it here, then it gives me an idea, you know, how much space it's going to occupy. So I'm going to go ahead now and get some kind of illustration. Let me get something. What do we say? We say um, something on uh, writing, maybe let's say report. Yes, so I'm just going to grab some images, maybe one. So I know where is the image to be placed. And if I want, I can insert some text box, let's say some caption. And change the color. Maybe this will do. And this is too much of text. Maybe I could increase the size a little bit. Remove a little bit. Yeah. All good. So almost ready. We just have to set the trigger. You can add a voiceover. We have to add a voiceover and only after that we'll set the trigger. trigger. So I'm just taking the same content and going to text-to-speech. Okay. Please don't forget to click on the closed captions, very important. So I, once I'm done with this and I'm going to come back to timeline and see here, this is Bob. Yeah, and then one more text to speech. Always don't forget this generate closed captions, which I am forgetting right now. And this is Samantha. Okay, all good. Now we set the trigger. Tell me, what trigger do we set now? You got the idea, right? What we want. People? Come on. Which one do I have to choose? When the user clicks, is it? When the variable, right, absolutely. We have Bob, Samantha.
And the same thing we apply. Uh, change the state of the character to what did we do for Samantha right now? We do for Bob. And the variable changes. Bob. All good? Everybody? And then now we want it for voiceover also because we have two voiceovers which are there. Because. So let's say we say play media, which let's say Bob. If the variable changes, which variable Bob? If the Bob is true. Okay, and same thing. Media, which one? We want the audio Samantha variable changes. What Samantha if the Samantha is true? Okay. Everybody? Mm -hmm. You yes. can create one more slide. I hope you're getting the idea. Even if you create one more slide, say in a set of trigger you see here the same set of triggers which we have kind of placed over here for the second scene second scene doesn't have one is for your uh, you know uh, your value another one will be your uh, thing now what i want you to watch out one more see when timeline starts on this slide that is what another kind of thing so change the character to brandon when the timeline starts the condition is this will be true that's what i was thinking that time and i paused for a second that's it let's create one more slide over here and we can have the same process need to be followed. Let's say you wanted to have a some kind of a, a quiz slide. Then, of course, we'll be doing the quiz next in our module. After the couple of interactions, we'll do the quiz. But at this moment, just for uh, for just for showing you, maybe I could take it up something. And so just coming up slide form view also to choose the correct response this is just a sample guys yes i can give a choice a b c and let's say right answer So over here, this is how this is going to appear. So if I want, I can have just a moment. I can have a character being inserted over here. I can just reduce it a little bit. I can have a character here. Same uh, the both the characters need to be there in place. So what I can do, let me just take it to the top. Okay, let me delete this. So same process need we just to make a small Edit. Okay, changes is above. Uh, I'll say when timeline starts. It's sort of a variable changes because we are not clicking on anything, you know. It should be rather when timeline starts. And here also the same thing. So quickly getting the character, Samantha. There we go. With some pause, with some pose. Okay, and one more. This is Bob. Now delete this carefully and then insert Bob. Where is it? And now I want you to notice, see, it's coming always in the center. You have to take him to that plus button. With me, people? Are you with me? Right, so just carefully 
place this next to that thing. Yeah, I think this will do and done. And then if we can just set a trigger. See, already you have layers, correct? And it's a default because we have set our thing. So already the thing will be coming up. So we don't have to do anything about that because it's a quiz slide. All I can do is I can go to form, just slide view, the base layer, and just set a trigger. Trigger what we want, change the state of the character to, let's say, Samantha. When timeline starts in the slide, condition, it's true. Yeah. One more. All good. You can preview it. People, I hope you followed it. Okay, let's preview this. Okay, so there we go. We chose Bob. She got grayed out. And then Bob is speaking. And then you have your Bob coming up over here. Just want to check something wrong with the voiceover. Oh, because I took those lorem if some voiceover. That's why play Bob when the variable changes equal to. That's why I think it's not been kind of played that well. I hope you followed it, people, everybody. The, all the triggers and everything is all clear. Right. So what we do, uh, we will learn how we can build a dial. So if you all remember earlier, we were using the dial. Let me just take a blank one. We were using the buttons for character states. So if I just go here and let me get a character <laughs> quickly. <laughs> Let's say Lily. And I insert the character, keep it over here. And we can create new states for the character. Like for instance, uh, I can edit states and add a new state. Let's say character have certain inbuilt state. Let me say alarmed. And then I can have another state. Let's say another state as, uh, let's say uh, something happy. Or maybe I can have another state. Let's say, for example, here, maybe worried, right? So what we used to do, we used to set a, okay, this is done. We used to set a button. Instead of that, we set a, uh, you know, instead of button, like let me show you with a button. Let's say we have three states in place. One is the, just kind of, Trying to show it up. Alarmed, happy, worried. Okay, so we set a button. Alarmed. Happy. And let's say worried. This is going to be happy. And this is going to be worried, right? So what we do, we if you all remember, we used to set the kind of, oh, this is not coming, selection. We keep it over here a little. So we say change the state of the character. Let's say this uh, character to... Uh, based on our whatever we wanted let's say first one is alarm if user clicks on button one okay right and let me just copy this for the remaining button copy and then copy right 
We can delete this. Yeah, so when user clicks on the button two, then we want the it's to be happy, the character to be happy. There we go. And the character to be, let's say, worried. This is where happening, it's hap with the help of button. Now the same thing, we can do it with the help of a, uh, the dial, so here. So slider and dial, more or less the same thing. It just happened that this is a flat one. If you just check it out, it's like a flat one, but it also has a value. See here, start value zero, initial value zero, end value 10. For you have these steps, you can increase it. You can alter it. Likewise, if you insert, let's say insert a dial, any design of dial you could choose. Let me choose this one and there we go. So if you just carefully notice, select the dial and then go to your design and you will have option C dial. Rotation 180 degree. I can choose a higher rotation also. And then start value, uh, end value, initial value, step value. And same thing you have it here also. Only thing your uh, dial is, your slider is like a flat one. Same thing is given a curvature manner, curved one in case of your dial. That's what the difference you will be able to see. The moment you insert a slider, you can see here automatically there's a variable. Okay, this is an old file. There's a variable which is getting added. See here, dial. Your here, this one. Slider basically getting added. Same thing happens here. The moment you insert, automatically you will have a your uh, this dial, a dial being added to it. So what we do over here, instead of button, we will make the character change its states based on this particular dial. So I'm going to do it in the same slide over here. Let me just move this a little bit this side so that you can have both interactions side by side. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to insert a um, dial. Let's say this dial over here. I can just take it, tilt it also. I can take it a little this side, in the middle, let's say over here. Right. And what we are going to do now, we're just going to insert these words over here so that we have an idea. Initial state can be the normal state. Let me just do the value first. We come to design and see the rotation is 180. If you want the rotation to be higher, let's say I want the rotation 360. See what happens to your dial. So you can choose your rotation. At this moment, I think 180 is good to go. Or maybe I can go for a lower, maybe 160 degree would do. Mm -hmm. I can just take it to the straight shape. There we go. Yeah. So, and then come back to design and check out the start value and end value. So let's say I just want four steps. I want to start zero and then I just wanted to end it at four. So I can choose accordingly, let's say four. Right. And then let's say in the design, I wanted the initial value to be one and then end uh, step value as one so what happens my this this whole thing this blue color one will come to one this is my one two three and four or maybe i can keep it three because i have three states in place so i can keep it total that of once again choose this design and you have your let's say end value as three so we have one two three because we have three state plus the first one is a normal state and we want the starting value as zero. Can you see the difference? That's what I'm trying to make you understand. It's starting from zero. See here. I just altered it just now. The design starting from zero. So your this uh, needle will accordingly change. So if I make it one, let's say I make it two, then my needle will start from two. So we want the needle to be at zero because we'll start from zero. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just quickly uh, set these uh, things over here. Let's say control C and I'm going to insert some text boxes. Here, this is going to be the alarm. I'm going to, and then we have happy. Here, this one happy. and then worry the last one so i can decrease the size of it a little bit okay and then get it over here the first one will be the normal one which is the default state will come up 
Yeah, if you want, you can come to format. If you come to format, you can change the color also according to that we choose for the thing here. So your design can come a little bit changed. If you want it like this manner or this manner, however way. The needle design can be also changed a bit. Let's say we wanted a red color. We want these also in the red color, let's say, or maybe purple color. Everybody, so click on this uh, thing, format, so you can change the design of the pointer accordingly. Yeah, like this. Let's say you wanted a dot kind of a pointer, or maybe you wanted something like this. The point, the border of the pointer can be also changed accordingly if you wanted the effects. And I'll show you anyway more of these stuff. At this moment, I'm going to show you. Let's see, we set a trigger. So if you just recollect, we have already set a trigger for the button. We don't want button. I'm showing you button because we used to operate through button. Now we can do it without the button with the help of your uh, dial. So what we do, we set a trigger. Let's say change the state. In the, instead of state, what 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 is that you think you, we will need to do now? Because we have inserted a dial. Everybody, check it out and tell me. What action we want? We change the dial, then what will happen? And the moment you insert a dial, you will have a variable being added to it. Mm -hmm. So which one do you think we will be using at this moment? Uh -huh, just variable. Which variable? Of course, we have to choose the particular dial. So yeah. now what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly go and check out what is a dial name which we have to so dial number six variable name see here okay it's mentioned here because in this project there are multiple variables dial variables basically so what i'm going to do i'm going to go very good guess you have done address variable here which variable the your dial six yeah so what value we wanted let's say we wanted the value one because we have those options one two three four options yeah, so adjust variable dial, let's say to one when dial, let's say the dial turns to, which dial dial one turns, let's say if its value is, uh, we can always say exact value instead of between, I can say equal to, let's say one. Yeah. Now, what you need to watch out over here, we want the character to be changed. Yeah, that's what we wanted over here. In, in this case, the character has three states, right? Where is the state score? Yeah. The character has three states. So as I change my dial, the character states will be changing it accordingly. Yeah, so change the state of the character to... So which one is the first alarm when the dial turns, which dial, dial number six. In this case, we have only single dial that is selected already. Let's say equal to mm -hmm. one. And then this one, uh, two, happy. Let me do it from here itself. Let's say to happy when the value is, the value is two. Yeah, and then this will be worried when the value is three. You don't need these two. Yeah, everybody, this is zero starting, one, two, three. And there we go. Let's preview this. Yeah, I'm just going to preview it for you for with the button. See what happens. Your state change. This is what you have done it in the past. Yeah, now we are going to do it with the uh, this. Let's replay. And then we have alarmed, happy, worried. Not through the buttons, but through the dial. Everybody? Okay. 
Now, another thing you can do it with the dialect, which is store it with a new file, perhaps a little better idea. Let's insert a, uh, insert a shape, let's say, for instance. You can convert that into a dial. So let me take a shape from here. Let's take this shape, this arrow, right? So now to the shape, I can convert this into dial. So select it, go to insert, and just see here. You have three dial options designed. Okay, and then see convert to dial. So I can click on it. And now see, this is getting converted into a dial. So if you just see, this will have all that value design. See rotation 180 degree. If I want, I can increase the rotation to let's say 300 degree wanted. This is what I did. I'll just do redo it for you. So I'm going to insert a shape. Is it visible now, people? Thank you for confirming and also for telling. Okay, so I'm going to insert a let's say a shape. Yeah, and then go to insert. You have three dial options. You can convert the shape into a dial. Let's say dial. See here now what happens. Now I can change the rotation. Let's say rotation to uh, 180 degree, and I can go to start the starting rotation I wanted. Let's say at um, start value will be at uh, um, maybe at three how many we have 12 we start at six okay so now check it out what happens you will have the same thing you know like how you are you have it with the usual uh, you know variable where as you slide let's say this is going to change accordingly here now to check it what you can do you can set up our uh, Automatically variable is getting added uh, up arrow one variable. Now what I'm going to do, I can I to check it. You know, if, if you just see it over here for this, our value is between six to the start value is six and the end value is two. And we have initial value as six. Step is one. So to check when you're rotating, see here one, two, three, four, five, six. Can you see that? Right? So this is where you're you're creating the start value, end value. How much you have? You basically have six points. So let's say I wanted to start from zero. Again, you will have 12 points. And here, instead of initial six, I want to start from, let's say, zero. So what's happening? I want you to very carefully notice. This is what basically see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12. Why it's 12? Because as you can see it over here, we have mm, here... Once again, anoting, we have 12 here. Start value 0 and end value 12. Clear, people? 12 here, 0 here. Initial value 0. Every step 1. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Now what you can do, just to test it, let me just clear this. Just to test it, you can insert a, a same way. You, know, you can insert the variable. Let's say equal percentage. Hold on. Okay, instead of that, let me just do it directly from here. Insert and reference. We have only one variable and say, okay, there we go. Yeah, and then increase the size. Now I want you to watch out. This will give you a better idea. Let's see here. Now variable is changing. Can you see? Everybody? Yes. Yeah, that's how basically uh, your slider operates. Sorry, your variable operates. We can do a lot of stuff with the variable. Perhaps I'll show you how interactions can take place. Right now, I want you to get that familiarity with the variable a little bit. In fact, let's say you have a... Um, uh, let me just take another new slide. Some basic slide, blank one. You can convert a shape into a dial. Let's say, for example, I'm going to grab a illustration. Maybe a button. Maybe image or something. I can grab it, hold of it. Or maybe clock. Okay, I don't have a round button. I can say clock, let's say. A circular one, which I'm getting. I can convert that into a dial. So maybe this could not do. Maybe I can say switch rounded. Let me take it that way. Rounded switch. Yeah. OK, 
Okay, these are the very limited options what I have it over here. So perhaps I can, none of them are suitable at this moment to be taken. Yeah, so let's say this is where I want it. So take the shape and then you can convert the shape into go to insert and dial and then to convert into a dial. See here. This is your starting, this highlighted zone. This highlighted zone is your selected place. Yeah, now I can go ahead and uh, set uh, also the value accordingly adjusted. So if you just preview this, this is how it will in a, It's a 180 degree dial now. See here. Yeah, and then here. So things can be converted. I can convert a... Uh, let's say a character also to a uh, to a like your what you can call it, dial. Let's say if I insert a character, and there are a lot of interactions which will be done. Perhaps I'll be showing you the demonstration of the interaction in the next session. But right now I just wanted to introduce you this whole idea so that you can try it out, changing the state which we did just now. Yeah, so again, choose the character, go to insert, and convert this into let's say dial. See what's happening now. This this whole character will rotate accordingly. You can make the lily rotate accordingly. Let's say here. So where do we use it? I'll just show you one demo. Uh, you know, interaction that I think going to give you a quick idea. For instance, if you see this demo, this is a really interesting one. This is from the file, guys. Um, I'll just demonstrate this for you. This is the file. This is from the file. Yes, Anuja. And I'm just previewing this particular slide. This is done with the help of a, a dial. Yeah, so this is a dial. This is a picture dial. You can see now. So what's happening as we're turning the dial, the items are appearing. So we have dial, layer, states, a lot of things to be played. Yeah, can you see that? Winter. Your season changes. Of course, it needs to be exactly over here. Autumn, spring, and then, of course, you have summer. So how is it happening? It's happening with the help of dial, nothing else. So what I was showing you, just to give you a little idea that how you can use dials, which can have a value. If you just see this one also, we have multiple triggers being set. So ultimately, we are playing with this particular dial. And it has a value. You see 180 degree rotation, start to end 100, initial value 50. And what we're doing, we're setting the dials and we're using the uh, layers, as I told you. So the basic aspects like your triggers, layers, or states, what we've been kind of learning for some time, will be there in place, not moving away. Only thing we have a couple of these things, like your slider, like we did the slider earlier, uh, dials and all these different options, the markers and all, can make the interaction more effective. So learner will have interactivity by uh, rotating the dial. We're going to insert an image, that is we're going to convert one image into a dial. So I just uh, saved some images from the internet. Uh, I thought it will save a bit of time. So I'm just grabbing the image. This is mainly for the dial. We are taking this arch. Yeah. Now what we're going to do, we're going to convert this into dial. But again, before we do that, you also have something called a picture state. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add up more states to this particular uh, picture. This is a, a original uh, state. I mean, the, the normal state which we will be considering. So what you to, need to do, once you get a picture, then click on this edit state. And then if you have this option, see a new state, when you see this, insert a picture as states. This is a duplicate states. So if you have this option enabled, then only you will be able to uh, import more images uh, which can enact like a state. So you need to import an image, remember that. So here we go, I click on it and I'm going to import all these other images. And select all and say open. Images need to be also numbered. I want you to very carefully understand all these images need to be numbered in an order. Then only to import properly. See here, arch 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is a normal one. So I have numbered it beforehand. Okay, so 
the same thing you can get it from the internet and just have to be a little careful with the numbering you cannot take it from the copy paste it from the internet you must save it in some file so that you will have this option i hope you all are following people mm -hmm. all right there we go done okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to convert this dial into uh, this uh, image into a dial so i'm going to say insert and then this is convert to dial you can see now it's been converted to a dial I can do a little bit of adjustment to it. Let me do that. Let me take this little down and place it in such a manner that it's kind of an being uh, in an overlap manner. I can take it a little bit up. Yeah. And just adjusting a bit. There we go. Everybody, I can place in such a manner that you'll have it. What, what learner is going to see this particular arch, basically. Right. Now what we do see is we have to set the trigger. So you can, again, go back and quickly check how many states do we have. We have around six states. Right. So see here. Can you see this image? What's happening here as I scroll across these states? But I have to set a trigger so that it will be kind of changing accordingly. So I'll say... Uh, the new trigger what the, what is the state we won't change the state of the which one the picture one there's a picture we have done yeah let's say arch one when dial turns the picture one that's the picture one dial is basically a picture over here it's a picture dial yeah when it's value yeah let's say equal to you can make it equal to let's say one yeah before that, let's quick check if I have set it. Uh, I have 12, I can make it 6. I think that's going to make more sense. Initial value will be, let's say, 0. And there we go. What's wrong? It's got really rotated. I just have to reset it looks like because it got rotated. Okay, I'm just going to redo it, guys. Otherwise, this is going to malfunction. Okay, once again, taking the image so that there's no problem as such. Converting this into dial. Just a little bit of adjustment. Hold on. I'm uh, just checking its value. It's a 180 degree. I think we will be good to go have it around the 6. Okay, this is creating a problem. Okay, let's go with this only. 12. And we...
just checking to sure that I have one. So there you go. I can see now there are two. I should delete it off. Let's say equal to, you can set a value now, equal to two. Yeah, and then arch, let's say value equal to four. Value equal to six. This will be eight, ten, and finally, this is twelve. And of course, arch one, this will become arch two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Five and this should be six. Everybody, something wrong. I think with this particular thing. So let me still try to preview this slide. Mm -hmm. No, that's what I was thinking. Something wrong. Yeah, I'm removing that and we'll retry. We're not converting them. Hold on. We insert a dial itself. Let's see this dial. Then insert a picture. Then that'll solve the problem. Yeah. Let me send the picture to back. So dial is in the front. Trying to now decrease the size of it a bit. Okay. Now I think they could work. Instead of converting this, we are just taking this as a... Okay, let me check the step value also for the dial. We have one to seven, we can keep it. And then initial, it can be zero. Yeah. Now, change the state of the dial, not the picture, to one. 
no set value hold on Make a copy of it. Change the state of the same dial to Now this should work. Let me make a copy of it. So arch three, then the value is three. Okay, so arch four, when the value is four. Arch five, when value is five. And finally, we also have arch six. And the value is six. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. If you want, we can change the dial to let's say six. Let me check what happens if we change it to six instead of seven. But I think we can keep it seven because it's kind of overlapping in between, middle, somewhere. So now we can play it around. So there we go. Yeah, and then we... everybody, people. Yeah, so that's how. So what we are doing instead of converting, I'm not converting the uh, image into dial, but I'm inserting a separate dial, and accordingly using the image as a, uh, I would say as a like kind of a background stuff to get this. Uh, Thing, the state being changed because all we are doing is a state change for the picture as you can see it over here in the image itself so th this is where you can see the you know, states can be changed for the images also I'll show you another interaction using the dial so perhaps we'll try to let me open yeah blank one so let me check what's the variable. It's a dial one. Okay. So what we try to do, we will create a kind of a small interaction pattern. Uh, let's insert a dial. First, let's divide this whole, uh, uh, you know, this whole uh, slide into four sections, assuming that we will rotate the dial and it will reveal the details for each of the section one by one as a learner rotates the particular dial. So, inserting the shapes. This is to divide the screen into kind of four zones. Okay. And then I'm going to insert a dial. Let me change some color also. Give a little different. Okay. And then getting a picture dial, maybe I could do that. So I'm just inserting a shape. I'll take a picture dial from here. This maybe. Yeah, and then convert this into a dial by this into dial, right? Now we'll go keep this 360 degree because we want the learner to rotate across. Yeah. And we will have a 
uh, I think four steps would do. You can have multiple steps. There's no such rule as such. We'll start, have a start value zero. Everybody? Yeah, I can just do a little bit of adjustment with the image by rotating the image to here because we want the green to be starting. So I just kept it like this. Okay. Now we have to insert the layers because layers will contain the content. Learner will rotate this uh, dial and the layers will reveal accordingly. Yeah? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create some layers. Let me just create for this. Yeah, so you know the whole process over here. This is a base layer. So let's say you wanted to, don't want to show some of the base layer. Otherwise, this whole box will be. So let's say we hide the first, let me just check the number of the rectangle. Otherwise, I may end up choosing the incorrect one. So this is, this is rectangle one. Then, okay, let me put it on a red. So there is no confusion. Let's say red, oh, oh. and then we have green. Okay, so I'm going to start with this uh, red one now. So, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide that. If you want, we can have a text on it or we can hide it however we want it. I can insert something on the top of it. So let's say I'm going to insert some kind of a text box now, um, which will contain the relevant detail. So let's say just taking this a little bit. It can contain images and other details also, however we you want it. And you can have a voiceover also if you are looking for that, something like that. For time being, I'm taking this. And we are not hiding anything. Okay, so let's create, this is our layer two. It means this is a layer red. Okay, and then we create a, for the green, let's say. I should check which is red green once again by going back. I think this bottom one is green. So I can again insert a text box, same text box I'm inserting. And then we have blue green towards the top right hand side. Let's say this is blue green. This is let's say this is blue. And then again inserting the text box for this layer. Yeah. And then finally it's the blue green. There, yeah, let's say blue green over here. Everybody? Okay. We have set the remember what values we have taken over here. That is important. Zero to four. Right? So if you just carefully notice this your uh, this pointer, see here, one. Yeah, here it's coming in between. So we have to do a little bit of adjustment to it. So what we can do, we can set it let's say instead of zero to four i can set it as a i can divide it let's say make it around uh, maybe eight yeah so what happens if i keep it eight now see the pointers it means this is where i'm starting zero yeah i hope you can view it it's a little lighter yeah see here one two three four five six seven and this is my eight 
it means when the learner comes to one or it could be between one and two then this will this layer will be visible or between two to four this layer will be visible so you have two option either you can say okay when when the when the dial turns three then you will be showing the layer blue or you can say when the dial value is between two to four then show this are you getting me yeah so if you want exact then we can do it that manner all else you can do it between i mean that's completely your choice how you would like to do it so i uh, just wanted to give you that indication so we have basically it's two four six and then you have uh, around okay so this is one so this is zero one then you have skipping two three and then skipping four five skipping six seven Okay, so we can, that will be the exact one if you want it. So let's put a trigger. Okay, show layer. Okay, which layer will begin with a red layer? Let's say red layer. Uh, when the dial turns, that is of course your, your dial turns. Talking about the dial. Yeah, when dial turns, dial the picture. Yes, there's a picture dial. When it's value. So which one do you want to take for guys? Exact or between? Anything. That'll be, that'll be like, that's completely your choice. So I'm just copying the three, four now. And I'll say show layer. Uh, next is blue. Yeah. When the value is between, let's say, two, two, four. There's no way to make it in point, guys. Just watch out for that. If I want it in decimal, if I let's say I want from 1.1 .1, uh, to this is, let's say, 4.1. I can do that perhaps, but again, it's not going to work because we have don't have finer uh, uh, value of it. So I'm going to keep it 2. Or I can keep it exact. If you want exact, let's say equal to, then this is what? This is one, uh, this is one 2. This should be 3. Okay, so then I should change for this also. Then if I'm keeping it equal, then it should be one. Yeah, and then for show layer, okay, let me change it from here itself. Green, this is green. When it's this five, and then finally, this is equal to you can do it anyway, guys. I mean, when you want to do it, this is what five, six, seven. This is because we have three things, and then we have blue green layer. All good. Let's preview this particular slide. Okay, there we go. So content will be shown. The content can be images and videos also if you wanted. Suppose if I glide here, you know, suppose I stop here. That, that's the reason, you know, if you show exact, then the learner can go over to that particular exact thing here. Now, if I put it between, then the moment I come here, in between, it will start showing the next layer. So, it's very important. Just take care of whether you want to between or that is completely up to you. Now, it will not go beyond. It's a 360 degree dial. So, it need to come back. Come back. Initially, this will, will be the starting point because we have already set it. So if you come here, then this, this will, because we already played it. So that's why it's showing like this. See here. Now nothing is there. When the learner sees a screen, moment we click on it, I mean, we rotate the dial, then only it will be you. To rotate, you have to use this, you know, this dial. Just select and move your cursor. All good? Everybody? Right. Now, if you don't want this, uh, you know, in each layer, we have made this uh, objects visible over here. This, uh, all these, if you want to change it, you can do it accordingly. Let's say you want to gray out the remaining when you are selecting the uh, one box, then that can be done for that. You have to separately insert the uh, boxes. The, the box color now is a dark color, right? Suppose you're selecting green, then the layer green will be shown here, green. So other layers will be in the lighter color. 
for that you hide these objects and then insert a lighter color boxes that can be an alternative to give it a preview otherwise you keep it like this the boxes can be of lighter color the text can be instead of having a um, this i can keep it a white color text perhaps that can give a better a preview here so if you just see then it will be looking like this a little better instead of text i can have something else also see here because text should be always contrast so just take care of that aspect 